Well, yeah, my name is uh, Snorri Solvang. Uh, I'm working at uh, the operator Elisa in Finland. Uh, specifically, I'm working in a team called Elisa Automate. And uh, what we're doing at Elisa Automate is um, uh, trying to bring some of the innovations uh, related to automation uh, within Elisa out to other operators. <laughs> and at the moment, we have, um, uh, we have one product, Elisa Son, uh, which is being, has been commercialized and is now also running in other operators' networks and a uh, few pilots going on. And what I will be talking about here today is uh, the use case of Lisa. So we are, of course, using some of the automation tools we, are, we have been building ourselves as well. Uh, and uh, a little about uh, some of our experiences uh, and the, where we think we're going with this. Just a few words about Elisa first. So <clears throat> uh, for those of you who don't know, we, we're located in Finland. Uh, we have about 5 million subscriptions. Uh, so we are the biggest one in Finland right now and uh, uh, the second biggest one in Estonia. And then our automation uh, really started back in, uh, back in 2009. Um, so because <coughs> in 2008 we, we weren't the leader in Finland and we had to make some bold moves. Uh, so what we did is uh, we launched um, unlimited mobile data for our subscribers. Uh, and uh, after just a year, uh, we saw in which direction this was uh, heading, and it was uh, uh, quite a lot of uh, mobile data consumption. And this has just been going on since then. So <coughs> uh, at the moment, um, I think I, I read a report a couple of weeks ago, and uh, the average Finn consumes about uh, 26 uh, gigabyte mobile data uh, per month. And uh, it's comparable to some of the larger operators in, in, in Europe, uh, and we have also a higher uh, mobile data consumption uh, or traffic running in our networks than some of uh, some of the larger operators. But uh, of course, uh, it's growing for for all operators at the moment, and and uh, uh, everyone will everyone is facing the same challenges. <clears throat> and uh, what has been uh, extremely challenging also with uh, not only mobile data growth is that our management has demanded us to have a, a flat capex and a flat opex. Uh, so we have to balance this, manage to in increase the mobile data uh, delivery to our, uh, uh, to our subscribers and our customers and at the same time uh, keep the cost flat. Um, and um, <clears throat> the only like, solution for this was actually then to automate uh, what we could, as much as we could, in uh, in all of, our, of the areas across uh, across the organization. And um, what I will do is uh, specifically focus on uh, what we have been automating in in uh, in the area of mobile, uh, the mobile uh, area. So not the not the fixed line. <clears throat> and um, well. How our organization is split is, uh, so we have uh, the, the planning and the rollout, uh, the operations and uh, the optimization. And here we are, we are building tools in each, each of these areas, uh, but of course planning and, and rollout, automating that completely, it's, uh, I think it's um, quite a few more years before you have some robots running around and putting up the base stations. So that's of course quite hard to uh, automate completely. And then uh, operations is, of course, easier. So we have, uh, uh, we have automated completely our NOC. We have uh, no people in our uh, network operations center. Um, and um, we have, of course, uh, a, a, a soft uh, SOC. So we are, um, we are, of course, observing our services, um, but not the not network itself. And then it's uh, the optimization where we also have this uh, Elisa Son that we have launched for other operators. <clears throat> so a little bit about uh, the Elisa Son. Um, it's, a, it's a closed loop uh, automation tool. Uh, so it's, it's just there. It's running the algorithms that we have built for, for the tool on a daily basis, uh, doing 
doing more than 3 million configuration checks and uh, I think at the moment more than 3,000 3, changes a, a day in our, our network. Uh, and this is just being observed by one of our op optimization uh, engineers. Uh, and then it has been, of course, some talk here about uh, like making things uh, virtual and cloud ready. And, uh, and this is also something that we have been focusing on. I think it's important to be able to, to scale the solution. Um, uh, and yeah, our optimization team is then working on building the algorithms for, for this tool rather than actually optimizing, optimizing the network itself. And then we have done some, uh, done some um, uh, findings and uh, experiences that we think have been really, uh, really great when we have been building these uh, uh, automation tools. Uh, I think one, ha has <coughs> one really important thing is, has been that we are focusing on the customer, end customer first. So, uh, finding the value proposition for why we should why we should actually automate and why we should build these algorithms or why we should do that it's, it should in the end impact the customer somehow and uh, that the service in the end should be better um, and then uh, developing the people so zero touch doesn't mean necessarily zero people uh, and uh, the ones who know the best our network is actually our engineers, so develop, develop the people. And it's also having an in-depth focus on, on each of the automation areas because there are, there are so many and there are so many different solutions, so finding the right solution first and then integrating afterwards. I'll, I'll, I'll go a little deeper into each of these three. So <clears throat> just an example of focusing on the, the customer first, so uh, one algorithm that we, we launched a few years ago was the load balancing algorithm uh, in our network. And uh, by doing that, we, we increased the lower level throughput. So actually, here you can see the lower level throughput during the, the busy hours uh, before we launched the algorithm. And then after launching the algorithms, uh, the throughput for the customer was on average, average better. Um, and this, this is an example from, from one cell, but uh, what we saw actually was an immediate impact uh, in the network and uh, I improved customer experience. So these customer complaints are related to, uh, to mobile data and uh, specifically related to what we have been improving in, in this area. Uh, and it was nearly reduced by 50%. So really an improved customer impact that it came within just, just weeks. And um, well, how, how, to, how to find these kind of right algorithms or right solutions um, and how to drive the automation building in the, in the organization? Um, well, <laughs> we have... Uh, uh, some good experiences, and uh, one thing has been the uh, the pressure from uh, from the CXO level in the company. So, uh, one example could be the uh, the strict financial uh, demands, uh, but also the openness and the initiatives in terms of of uh, automation. That also the ones on the top has been driving uh, the automation down in the organization and are positive about us doing, doing automation. Uh, and then as I mentioned, so the engineers uh, are the ones that know our network best. So if we just would take in a tool and re replace them with a tool and throw them out, uh, then we would throw out actually quite good, good knowledge out of our organization. So what we think has been really important for us is to, is to combine these knowledges and, and make them uh, uh, make the automation themselves. Uh, so we have done that by, for example, having a, a training academy. So our engineers 
didn't really know any coding or programming, but uh, they have had sessions where they have been uh, taught Python code and are, are, are building um, automation themselves. And I think this is also a change in uh, mentality for, for our teams and now it's, it's more about, okay, how, how, can, how can we automate this? How can we automate that? And find, find new things that is, is possible to automate because uh, they are the ones who knows the, the struggle and the hard cases. And then combining, combining these teams, so it, it should be a combination of, uh, of, of programmers inside the organization. A lot of telecom operators are now have large amount of, uh, of programmers um, and expertise there in the organization as well. So create novel teams has been essential for us to manage to, uh, to build different kind of uh, automation tools. <clears throat> and then I think I've heard a few words also about like finding the right like, business case and, and finding, the, finding the benefits and uh, uh, I know some are trying to uh, automate everything at once, end-to-end -end, uh, automation. Um, we, we, we think it has been really important for us to uh, to find the right things to automate first. So uh, in every, all of these areas, these were the areas I was mentioning earlier, so uh, opera operations and uh, optimization and planning and deployment, they have used their own kind of tools uh, and tried to find the best way for themselves uh, to solve these, uh, these problems. And it has given us great results, so a uh, huge reduction of incidents and. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, no one working in the network operations center at the moment. Um, and uh, then for the self-organizing networks, we are uh, doing millions of, uh, of, cha uh, of checks and uh, changes every single day. And it's just one person coming to work, checking that algorithms have been running uh, as they should. Uh, and then also planning team developing for themselves. Um, <clears throat> lastly, so how has our process been um, going from back in the days and where do we think it's, it's sort of heading? And uh, this, is, this is divided into how, how, how we feel it has, uh, had it, how it has been going uh, until now, we, we are running things currently in closed loop. We started out with uh, having the engineers just doing the changes themselves in, directly into the network. Then some, some started to build smaller scripts or algorithms uh, that would uh, analyze the network and, uh, and propose certain changes and they would be placed into the network by, by the engineers. And the natural step for, from there has obviously been to, to completely run this in closed loop and just having the engineers developing new use cases uh, for themselves. And this is, this is something we are developing because we have also a, a software development kit that we have created. So, so it, it should be easy uh, to develop new algorithms across multi multiple vendors and uh, that's best solved uh, having a software development kit. And then we are investigating how, how uh, we best can use uh, an AI to increase the decision making and improve the decision making for what changes and uh, um, how to improve the, the network further because it's, it's getting increasingly difficult and uh, the network might look completely different on a Saturday from a Wednesday. So uh, how, should we, how should we then adjust and how can we increase the automation impact? Uh, yeah, but I think that's, that's it for now. And um, yeah, thank you so much.
Um, thank you very much, Snorri. There, there is time um, for some questions because Snorri finished in 15 minutes. Are there any questions before we move to the next speaker? One question here. Uh, Jose Bonnet from uh, Altis Labs. Um, just to give us I an idea of the size of that uh, team that uh, optimizes, uh, because I understood that uh, currently it's still a human team, right? It, it, is it uh, 10 people, 20 people? Uh, well, we have, a, we have a team that is building uh, algorithms. And uh, at the moment, I think it's, it's less than 10. Uh, so, yeah. Ray Forbes, thank you for a very good presentation. Uh, I don't quite see how this uh, zero touch seems to be a stage beyond what you said. Well, it's, it is optimization. Uh, what you're saying is very good. I'm not criticizing you, Ray, but I just wonder, this seems more related to AI and optimization, which I think we're going to talk about more this afternoon. Well, uh, I agree. Uh, this specific use case is, of course, optim an optimization use case. Um, what I'm what I'm saying is that uh, the um, what has been important for us is to to run the optimization in zero touch. So not having to touch the optimization anymore, and uh, eventually, I think that will be built also into to other areas. And then it's all about combining, combining that completely. Yeah. Yeah, there's time for... Um, just ask a question about the value of automation you said. So essentially you're focusing on specific tasks in order to produce a value, right? How you set up the measurements or KPIs before and after that you can measure the value of the automation? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Um, so we, we, we have a KPI measurements in, in the system that we, we have built. Um, if, you, if you're referring to the SON specifically or, yeah. Well, so it's, uh, uh, it's also algorithms that are following the KPI measurements. So, and uh, we have done an analysis on uh, on the on the benefits um, afterwards, and then, of course, to define the, what K, what KPIs can be improved uh, before and, and how to improve those, that's decided by the the engineers and the optimization team because they are the best ones to define what areas that should be improved and how it could be improved. One more question here in the front. Uh, yeah, did, did you say you have zero people in your NOC? Yes. So what happens if there's like a major problem? Okay, yeah, that's an excellent question. So uh, we, have, we have some people working in operations. Uh, they are working uh, eight hours a day from eight to, eight to five, uh, and then they go home. And if there is a major issue that appears in the network, so it's a robot calling them, and uh, then they can check it uh, if they have to deal with it straight away, and otherwise they will uh, have a look at it the day after. Or, but the, 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 the tickets and the alarms is uh, automated in, in the network, and uh, the machine uh, reboots the base station or does the, does the changes automatically. And we have also um, uh, implemented so that the the uh, the machines are following the KPIs, and if there is a drop in KPI, it can choose to make some make some action. And we're also heading more towards the predictive analysis, so it's doing that before the problems occurs. Yeah. Okay, we, we should, we yeah. Should, that's great. Okay. Thank you.